So it's been 11 years since Ubisoft started developing Skull and Bones and in that time we've had so many ups and downs regarding the game. For a long time we even thought that it had been abandoned and that we wouldn't be able to play the game at all. And now in 2024 we're finally able to explore the open world of Skull and Bones. And ladies and gentlemen, let me present to you the first quadruple A game in the world. <laughs> That's at least what Ubisoft CEO Yves Gamow said, that this game was going to be a quadruple A game, so one A more than we have in games like Assassin's Creed. And before I even start talking about the game, I have to say immediately, this is nowhere near a quadruple A game. And even though I take it kind of as a joke that he said that, it doesn't mean that we won't be able to have fun in the game. We start off with Skull and Bones on this little, well, almost raft, let's say it as it is, and as we progress in the game, we grind ourselves up, we upgrade things, and make our ship bigger and bigger. Although the first letdown that I had was that even around the end game of Skull and Bones, we don't have this gigantic, majestic ship like the Black Pearl, for example, from the Pirates of the Caribbean. You know, it's still big, don't get me wrong. But I thought that we could upgrade our raft into this epic thing that just looks incredibly scary and intimidating at the same time. But even after 25 hours, that's how much it took me to get to the end game of Skull and Bones, it really wasn't that at all. And after creating the character in the beginning, you realize very fast that your character is going to play a very minor role in the whole game and the couple of cutscenes that he is in the picture it is an absolute joke you know from everything from the facial expressions to the way he moves it's nowhere near a quadruple a game ubisoft when it comes to the cosmetics like for example how your crew is going to dress or how your ship is going to look you know there are some decent choices obviously also some paid ones i mean it's ubisoft what do you expect but to be fair also the free ones look quite all right so when it comes to the open world of Skull and Bones, you know, the game is set in a fictional version of the Indian Ocean. And even though Ubisoft praised the game by being the biggest open world, I mean, of course it's going to be the biggest open world, because 95% of it is, well, just water. So obviously when you just look at the scale of the map and of the open world, the game is huge, of course. But Ubisoft saying that this is the biggest open world they've created yet, I mean, it's kind of a joke again. What I was quite surprised by actually in the open world is that Ubisoft still put quite a big amount of effort into diversifying how the open world looks. Like for example, the game looks completely different when you're swimming around Singapore, which has a different name in the game but is the fictional version of it, than for example when you're at the African coast. And that definitely is one of the strongest aspects that Skull and Bones have. But before starting the game, I mean what was the last pirate game that we had from Ubisoft that everybody still loves today, obviously Assassin's Creed Black Flag. So I kind of measured Skull and Bones compared to Black Flag and we all loved the freedom that we had when it came to Black Flag. You know, you had the four big cities and moreover, while the open world was still huge, there were a lot of small islands that you could visit. Well, in Skull and Bones, other than maybe St. Anne and Singapore, everything feels the same. You know, I was definitely expecting at least a couple more individual islands that kind of have their own flair to it, but I was heavily disappointed when it came to that aspect. So when it comes to the open world, you know, while it looks good from the outside, the quality of it is extremely low. I was definitely expecting much more and I was expecting it to at least match Assassin's Creed Black Flag that came out over 10 years ago now but Black Flag's open world is on a completely different level. So when it comes to the gameplay, I mean, the gameplay pretty much are the ship battles, okay? You know, as I said, in this game, you really don't use your character at all. You know, 98% of the time, you're just on your ship. So when it comes to the gameplay, it's mostly the sea battles. And I have to say that those are a lot of fun. 
you know, drowning enemies or upgrading your own ship in order to make more damage is really satisfying and like in Black Flag, the sea battles are nothing to be ashamed of. But again, they're so extremely similar to Black Flags and for a game that came out over a decade later, you would at least expect some minor changes. Like for example, you could actually see where you hit the ship or maybe the crew could react so maybe when they have extremely low life and when they're facing ship way better and way bigger than them maybe they jump into the ocean or things like these but it's extremely identical to black flag when it came to your own ship though i was quite surprised by the amount of different mortars or cannons that you can choose from so you can just upgrade your ship so that you increase the damage, stuff like that. You can actually choose which cannons you're going to use. You can choose from the different mortars, torpedoes. Here I was very surprised on the different choices that we have. But as you might notice now, Skull and Bones isn't a pirate game in my opinion. It is a pirate ship game, okay? Most of the time you spend on your ship and you don't really get the feeling of being a pirate like you got in Assassin's Creed Black Flag. And when it comes to the story, I mean, look, in most reviews, the story is a proper aspect that I talk about, but it's completely different here in Skull and Bones, because the couple of cutscenes that the game does feature are so bad and so badly written. You butchered Compagnie's warships and gird their olds, just like a proper pirate would. And there's basically zero emotional connection in the game you know, all of the characters that you meet, I mean most of the people you can talk to are mostly merchants or just give you a quest and don't appear at all in the game. And the couple of characters that you do meet, you could call them the main characters, are in the end also just people that have a small cutscene and give you a quest afterwards with zero emotional connection and all of them aren't rememberable at all. And another thing that I was very disappointed by is actually, look, in Assassin's Creed Black Flag you have people like Adewale I mean, he even got his own game afterwards and he accompanies you on your ship and you actually know who the person is. In Skull and Bones, you can't do that at all. I mean, it would be so interesting to have some quests where you're trying to get new crew members that give you buffs and have a personal connection with our protagonists. But in Skull and Bones, that's not the case at all. I mean, you can't even walk on our ship. And you know, that fact is so important in the game because it doesn't have a great main story. Like when it would have an incredible main story with great characters and a lot of jaw-dropping moments, it would be a completely different discussion. And you know, also when it comes to the different fractions that we have in the game, it's extremely shallow. Like why can't I actually choose to join the French? And it would have been so incredible that when you join, for example, the French people, that you kind of have your own couple of twists and quests in the game than, for example, if you would join the Englishman. You know, something along the lines of Hogwarts Legacy, where you know you could choose the house that you would go in. The main story in the core of the game would be the same, but there would still be some additional stuff and some additional quests that you could only play when you were in that house. And I would have also loved if the story had actually some interesting characters. You know, in Black Flag, as I said, you had Blackbeard. You know, there are so many incredible pirates. If you're interested in the history of pirates, you obviously know that. In Accessory Black Flag, they did that perfectly with portraying real characters like Bartholomew Roberts or, as I said, Blackbeard. And you could add so many other pirates here, like the Barbarossa brothers, Captain Kate, but they decided to not do that at all. And I just feel like they didn't really have the proper passion to create this game. So all in all I got to say that while this game costs $60, I'm extremely disappointed. It's not worth the price at all. I mean think about it, 200 million dollars was the budget for the game and 11 years. They could have done so many incredible things and they could have made this the best pirate game of all time. But even after 11 years, I feel like Skull and Bones isn't ready after all. And calling this game a quadruple A game is just an absolute joke. But Skull and Bones also has its good side. You know the ship battles, well after 20 or 25 hours, they start to become quite boring. There were still some moments that I'll remember for a long time. You know, drowning a huge ship while the great soundtrack is booming in the background. 
I mean, that was great to experience. And Skull and Bones would have been an incredible free-to-play game where you could add things like a battle pass or make it 20 bucks, but $60, you know, the price of a full AAA game is not worth the money at all. But as I said, Skull and Bones, even though it has a lot of negative aspects, still is a great game to play in the evenings, just to wind down and have some fun on your ship. But I just can't wrap my head around the incredible wasted potential that the game has, because the potential obviously was there all day long, and especially when you have such a humongous budget and 11 years of production time, and a team of 500 people that develops this game. So as I said, while Skull and Bones definitely has its moments and great aspects, I'm still quite disappointed and even sad that we didn't get the game we all wanted. But now I'm interested in your opinion on Skull and Bones. Have you actually played it? Well, I hope you didn't spend $60 on the game. If so, tell me your experience. Alright guys, that was it for me in today's video. I wish you all an amazing day. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.